Hey everybody, it's Ben here, and today we're going to build a custom horn for our car. And no, we're actually not going to reuse the horn button. We'll add a dedicated button somewhere else on the dashboard to play our custom sounds. So let's take a look at the parts that we're going to be using here, and then specifically what they do. We've got an Adafruit sound effects board, a 100 watt two channel audio amp, audio cable here, some buttons, an eighth inch mini pin, a female connection, let's see, a cigarette lighter plug, 12 volt to five volt uh, power converter. And lastly, we'll need a speaker. In this case, I chose a mega horn style that's gonna go right under the hood of the car. So what we're going to do here is use a dedicated sound board to play back a wave file through an audio amplifier and out through a speaker. So let's take a look at the parts we're using on the project right here. I've got an Adafruit soundboard, uh, very small, a uh, nice little compact thing. It's not an Arduino. We don't have any programming here. Uh, it's a very simple thing. It just has uh, these pins as inputs. You ground one of those pins to activate a uh, sound being played back. Sometimes these are almost too small. Um, and I'll like to use a piece of perf board just to make it a little easier to handle. And then also that uh, makes it a little easier to mount or do strain relief for cables, things like that. Uh, also on here, it has micro USB for both uh, dragging and dropping the audio files to it. And it also has a headphone jack as an output here. We can use headphones or we can, of course, just run a signal out to some sort of uh, powered speakers or amplifier. Speaking of which, here we have a 100 watt uh, audio power amp. Uh, pretty simple, again, small unit. This end, we've got our power and our speaker wires out. And on the other end, we have our inputs. We're gonna use these RCA line level audio inputs. And over here, we also have um, a trim or you know, set the input levels. But in functionality, that's also going to work uh, exactly like a volume control. Now, to get our audio in here, we're going to need a cable. I've got this one right here, a uh, stereo mini pin on the one end, and then our uh, line level RCA audio out over there. We're going to need a cigarette lighter plug. We're going to use this to power everything because uh, this is for the car. Also, I wanted this to be removable, otherwise I could hardwire straight to a dedicated circuit in the car. We're also going to use a little dedicated power supply for USB. This is essentially a DC to DC converter. It takes 12 volts in and it outputs five volts and it has attached to it a micro USB output. Uh, there's other ones too where it uh, just has like a USB output. You plug in whichever kind of cable you need it to be right there. We also need some sort of a button. Um, I had this really cool horn button around, which I like, except it's actually not going to work for us. You got to keep in mind in your car, you're probably going to find some sort of a uh, place to easily mount a button. I found this blank spot on my dashboard. And I was easily able to pop this out. But if you look on the back, there's not a lot of room in there. In fact, the whole thing is smaller than the horn button. So the horn button's not gonna work, but a nice small button will. So I've got some of these buttons here. I like the yellow, it's nice and bright. That's gonna fit in there. And of course, because the shape, I really need to make sure it fits first. So what I did was simply pull off the nut drop it in there, make sure it fits. And then that's also going to be used to determine where I'm gonna drill the hole, which on this is actually not going to be centered. It's gonna to have to be just a little, little tiny bit off center. I also need a, a connection for the speaker. Now our speaker uses a mono eighth inch connection. So I've got this little tiny um, component right here and again, that's kind of a nice, nice reason for having some perf board around because I can just mount that right to it, make it a lot easier to do the connections. 
So on the speaker wire out from the amp, what I did was I put one of those connections onto just a little piece of perf board and soldered on the two wires from the audio amp output. And this gives me a nice place to uh, mount things, make sure I have some strain relief and all. And then the back end of this just plugs into the amp. So there we go, that's our speaker connection. Now to power everything was actually pretty simple. I've got my uh, 12 volt cigarette lighter plug connector. And then if we follow it to the end, all I simply did was take the red wires from both the amplifier and our little power adapter, put them all together, twisted them, just added a little bead of solder and connected it to the red wire. Likewise, two black wires, one for our little uh, power adapter, the other for the audio amplifier. Put them together, twist them, a little dab of solder, and of course using some uh, heat shrink, remembering to put that on before doing the soldering so we can have some nice clean connections. And then also uh, just some zip ties to take up any of the extra wire out of the way. And then we've got our audio connector right here or a power connector for the audio amp and that's going to plug into our power connection. So now we've got power and audio out. And then our input end, just take this cord And then that headphone out jack on our audio board. And we still need power for this, which is why we had that micro USB connection. And now the last thing we need is just a button right here. So on the sound board, along here we've got our pins. Uh, 0 through 10. Those are our input pins. And then we need to connect those to ground. So what I did is I just took a, a push button and I soldered on two jumpers that have those kind of standard female connectors on them. I'm going to connect one of these to, let's just go with pin 1. And there's a couple of grounds on here. There's one over here on the end. I'm going to put this on. So now, when we press this button, we're going to connect pin 1 to ground, and then automatically our file associated with that will play back. Of course, we're not powered up yet, and we also have to load our audio files onto here. So why don't we do that next? Okay, here we go. We're on my computer and we just plugged in the Adafruit sound effects board uh, with a USB cable. We can see here um, that it is showing up as a drive. It does in fact have 16 megabytes of storage on it. It's FAT16, so it's basically old school, simple, uh, like a thumb drive. You can plug it into a Mac or a PC or whatever you want. Now on my computer already, I have uh, some different sounds to play with my custom horn. So for example, if I preview this... Moo. No. Moo! No. Moo. No. You can hear we've got a couple of different sound effects. But the way that those are named, those are just regular descriptive names. That's not how we use them on the Adafruit board. Instead, it has a distinct naming convention. Uh, it's the trigger number, or the pin, uh, so T followed by the number like 00 or 01, 05, whatever it is. Now I'm using pin 1, so I'm going to do T01. And then I don't just want the sound to play. I actually want uh, one of a number of random sounds to play. So I have these all named as T01 Rand and then uh, 
a single digit number for my, my various files that I have in here. So it's going to randomly play uh, files zero through eight. And let's see, I've got one more file here, my random file number nine. So I'm just gonna drag and drop it over. Now you can name it and then drag it over. You can drag it over and then rename it. It doesn't matter. Uh, just follow the, uh, the little tutorial at Adafruit to make sure that you get the file naming convention correct. Otherwise, it's not going to work for you. Um, and you don't have to do nine or 10 different random sounds. You could do two random sounds if you want. Um, but uh, they do have to be in order. I found that when I accidentally didn't have zero in there, it didn't work at all because it, it wants to start at the bottom. But now I've got those sound effects all in there and they're ready to go. So I just have to eject from my computer and then go and plug this back into the car. Okay, back from the computer, we are now at the workbench. I've got our soundboard with power uh, connector to it. We've got our little test button. Uh, to power this up, uh, our 12 volt cigarette lighter plug, I'm just gonna bench test this right now with a uh, bench top power supply. Just run some leads to that 12 volt, turn that on. And then for the output of this, I'm just gonna test it with uh, some headphones that I've got right here. And we can see right now, there's a little power light on there. Right down here, we've got a power indicator light. In fact, I'll just kill our bench power supply. You can see that turned back off, turn our power supply on. We've got power to it. And if I hit the button, it should make a noise. And you can also see there's a little tiny surface mount LED that activates um, when it's doing sound playback. Now I'm gonna put the headphones right by my microphone and let's hit the button again. Moo. I gotta have more cowbell. Okay, well anyways, even if it doesn't come through uh, on the microphone, uh, we know it's working and now we're ready to install this in the car. Now one thing I didn't show you because it's hard to film uh, is just chasing the wire for the speaker uh, from under the hood back into the cabin of the vehicle. What you need to do there is find uh, some sort of a grommet or some location where some of the existing wires already pass through or you might get lucky find a blank plug but basically to get the wire through from under the hood to inside the car. Now in a previous project I already knew exactly where that was so I was able to use that same location a piece of wire uh, tape the uh, stiff wire tape the speaker wire onto there poke it through pull it through to get the speaker wire inside the car. So right over here in the car, we've got a blank cover plate, a uh, couple of them actually. I already used this one for a previous project. So let's put our horn button right here. And all I really need for that is take a little tiny screwdriver, get it under here, pry it and push up just a little bit and then that comes right out. Next, I drilled a hole through the blank plate. I soldered a pair of wires onto a button, ran that through the plate, installed the button in the plate, and then fished the wires through under the dashboard. Then all I had to do was snap the plate into place. So this is the center console area of our car. Back up over here is the gear selector. And I was able to pull this out because this is where I pulled through the speaker cable. So we've got the speaker cable. It's nice and long, so we could still put our project kind of anywhere we want. But of course, with that extra cable, I could wrap it up, zip tie it, get out of the way, whatever I need to do. I also put a pair of wires coming through here from where I'm going to have the speaker. And I put a pair of those little... Um, kind of computer jumper female connectors on there. So now we've got our amplifier, all our cables coming off of it, and our soundboard right here. So I'm going to take off our test button. Going to make sure that the 
cable from the soundboard out to the amplifier. And then the amplifier output is now going to our speaker. Need to make sure that everything has power. So we've got our cigarette lighter plug and our cigarette lighter is right here. Like literally right there. Um, and again, I wanted to do that so this is removable. It's still, the wire's pretty much out of the way. Um, if I decide I really like this, I want to kind of permanentize everything. All I have to do is go back here and splice in, uh, make a more permanent connection. This is now the wires uh, from the button on the dashboard, and I need to make sure that that goes into the back of our soundboard on pin one and ground. And if I'm happy with how all this works, um, I don't have to use little jumper wires. I could solder those in place uh, nice and permanent so it doesn't fall off or anything. But I think for the moment, I'll just leave it so I can play around with some of the other pins. Okay, at this point, it looks like a rat's nest, but everything is plugged in. So all I got to do is turn the key on the car, turn on the ignition, or at least put it in the accessory mode. I'm going to see right on here, we've got a little power indicator light on the amp. We know everything's working. Um, a little tiny power light on our soundboard as well. Looks like everything's ready. Uh, also, what I'm going to do here is I still have that sensitivity control on our amplifier. So I'm going to make sure that's turned all the way down just so I don't annoy the neighbors while working on the project. And now just lean over and press the button. Press it again. Keep pressing it. And it works. Uh, so now what I can do is set the volume up to where I want it to be for actual use. And I found that the size of the amp and all the other wiring together actually fits really nice right here. There's a spot between this vent and the plastic that goes over it. So all of this, I just got to tidy it up, zip tie everything together, make everything nice and out of the way. And it's going to fit right back in here, whole nine yards. And then I can put the cover on. Last thing before packing all this up, I'm just going to use a couple little dabs of hot glue. These will keep these jumper wires in place so I have good electrical connection. And then I can also use it as strain relief just to uh, hold the wires directly onto the board. So it's kind of multi-purpose and uh, solder is actually pretty hard for me to remove. But if I need to pull these jumpers away later, it's pretty easy to do by removing the hot glue. So here we go, looking from uh, the driver's side door. Uh, you can see that with our cover back in place, looks real clean. We've just got power from the cigarette lighter plug. And then of course, over here, we now have our Moo button. Press that to Moo. Now of course, it's not gonna Moo at the moment because the key is not in the on position, which is a uh, safety feature, I guess. I hope you liked this project as much as I did. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And until next time, stay charged up. I gotta have more cowbell.